Hey, big guy, how are you? Hey, how are you? Having the best day of my life. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. I, I can't top that. Uh, I'm having a pretty good day, but I can't top that. Okay, first of all, dealer, we're a full services advertising agency. Today, we're going to talk about what is the most effective means to advertise for car dealers. Now, tell me some of the things you're doing right now that are very effective in the market. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's interesting because uh, you know, as you know, we're we're full service, so there's really nothing. Uh, when I want to say nothing. Of course, somebody will find something, but there's really nothing we don't do. I mean, you know, digital, traditional, social, etc. Um, and, and it's you know, throughout our our uh, clients, it's interesting. Not everything works for everyone, right? Some people are really really heavy in paid search, and we're having a you know a, a lot of success with that and driving it to good converting pages, and we're seeing results there. But, you know, it's funny, you know, Jim, one of the things that I think is a surprise to a lot of people when I talk to them and they ask me that question is, you know, direct mail is still working extremely, oh, extremely yeah. well, right? I mean, it's, it's, not a, it's not a popular topic of conversation amongst, you know, digital marketing agencies or even, even sometimes just as you go to some, a conference or you talk to a 20 group, everybody wants to talk digital, digital, digital. And, you know, look, I get it. That's so important to have a strong digital strategy. Um, but we're seeing a lot of results right now still with direct mail. I think dealers ought to hear that. Um, I think Facebook, uh, you know, honestly, and you know, here we are, uh, there's just so many eyes and ears, uh, you know, here that if you have a really strong strategy, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of conversions, you know, off of Facebook with good ROI, of course, I think a lot of dealers are, um, but sometimes it's not where you expect. I mean, we we even still to this day, and I think it's relevant to talk about, we still have a couple of stores that are just, you know, they have good results out of newspaper. So <laughs> it's, it, it, right? I mean, if you're a Buick store off the beaten path in the middle of nowhere with a demographic of an older skewed clientele um, and, a, and a lot of registered, you know, older cars in that market, you can still have some good success in newspaper. So I've always you know, been a little bit question, but, you know, it's all over the place. I've always said newspaper for car dealers is extremely effective if you own a puppy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. or, you got, or you got a parakeet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Listen, no doubt. But, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's so, it's so funny, you know, as we have evolved over the years, and uh, I think most people might know we started as a direct mail company. We moved into traditional marketing. You know, we've become, you know, a, a very strong, you know, player, I think, in the digital space. But, uh, you know, we've always kept everything we've always done. You know, we've never abandoned anything and said, hey, we're going to pivot so far to the left that we got rid of that. And, I, and I'm really glad that we did that because, you know, there is a place. There's a place for the mail. There's a place for the newspaper. There's we, we, radio. You know, look, if you want to ask where, where it's really at, radio is still extremely effective if done properly, right? I mean, you got to have the right market. I want to get down into the, into the, the deeper dive. What makes radio effective? How is it effective? How do you buy it? Yeah, all right. So, um, you know, look, you have to know whether or not you're a good radio market first. You know, so I'll give a couple of softball pitches to dealers. If you're, if you know what your Nielsen rank is, you know, and you're somewhere between, say, 75 and the 275 range, meaning that you have uh, a Nielsen ranked market and you're in that market, you have your own radio stations, you're not pulling from an outside, you know, place and you're, you're not too far, you know, north, south, east, or west of a Nielsen ranked market. Um, you know, as you get higher up the ranks above 75, it starts to get relatively expensive, um, you know, for a dealer uh, to really compete with, with what you need to do. And what you need to do is buy multiple stations all over the place, you know, four, five, six, seven stations deep. You don't want to dabble, right? We always say around here, you don't want to dabble. Don't dabble in any media. Oh, no. I've always said if if television or radio, if you buy a day, own the day. Own the day, right. Buy, buy own the day, multiple buy stations, spots, too. Buy enough spots that anybody that wanted to come on against you would be embarrassed. Right, right, right. I mean, hey, Tom Morris, by the way, I see that you said hi, so hello. Um, uh, and hi, Anthony. Uh, but, uh, you know, so, so beyond buying multiple stations, you want to buy the right day parts. You know, I think a while back, you and I had one of these conversations about you know, make sure that you're not buying times when people aren't listening. So look, go four, five, six, seven stations deep, uh, follow the 400 GRPs guideline. And, and then the other part to that is, look, you got to have, you got to have really inspiring creative. You can buy all the spots you want, but if the spot that you play doesn't inspire people, 
uh, to come in, then you, you don't really have anything. And and so here's another little softball pitch for the for the dealers that might be listening is, you know, ask yourself, does my does my advertising that I'm playing on the radio since we're on that topic, you know, does it pass the Saturday morning test? And what I, what we talk about around here is on Saturday morning, does Mr. Buggins wake up, look at Mrs. Buggins? You know, that's the customers I call. All the Buggins, I know the, the you know the Buggins, Jim. You know the Buggins. So you know, does Mr. Buggins say to Mrs. Buggins, "Hey, we got to go down to X Y Z dealership and check this out. We got to go see if that deal I heard about I can get. We got to go find out, you know, how good that deal is. It seems like that dealer's got a lot going on." So when they ask that question, we always ask ourselves, hey, do we have the right reach? Do we have the right frequency to make it seem like we're really hopping and get something going on? And is the message so inspiring that Mr. Buggins says to Mrs. Buggins, you know, hey, look, we got to go check this thing out. And if it passes all that, then the ad's going to work. Well, the ad's going to work if people remember the ad, they remember what the ad was about. They remember right. what product it was about. Correct. Have you seen, have you seen the commercial on TV where the, where the guy comes in and, He's at the counter at the lunch place. He says, and the guy says, hey, safe drivers save 40%. Yeah. yeah. That? And everybody in the restaurant, hey, safe drivers. Well, save 40%. The, the, the key to that is nobody knows that actor's name. Right. He's one of the foremost black African-American actors in, in the industry today. His right. name is Dennis Haysbert. But okay. nobody knows that. They know I didn't know it. I didn't know it. <laughs> yeah. His name, <laughs> you know. He you know what people do know is the 40%. Right. Right. Yeah, so they yeah. hammered home their message. They got the message through the ad. Yeah. Right. Now, when you buy radio advertising and background, my background, I spent one third or one half of my adult life in radio. I know. Yeah. We had, we talked about that. That's, that's right. cool. And you know, like I said, most people, most, if you're a linear company and you only do digital, well, then you're going to say that, you know, traditional doesn't work. Radio doesn't work. Television doesn't work. OTT doesn't work. This doesn't work. Direct mail doesn't work. That's one of the things that I do like about being a full service agency that, you know, where we don't, we're not linear like that. We have so many, none of our budgets look the same. None of them look the same. We have some dealers where mail doesn't really work that well for them because of the market they're in or, or, uh, you know, possibly that, you know, just that the client base doesn't really respond well to it. We have other stores where radio doesn't work. We've got, but if you, once you get to know the store and you find the mix, it's really about that mix, you know, at the end of the day and figuring out the store, and, and where they truly should be. And some stores should be on radio and most stores should be sending mail. And of course, I think all stores should have a very strong digital, uh, you know, strategy as well. You know, it, it's amazing because I had a, a couple points about radio. If I was going to buy radio today for one of the dealerships I work with, first of all, I would use a full services agency. I would, right. I, I would, I would hand off to you, you know, in the backfield. Right. Doing all there's certain parameters I want to see. And the most effective advertising on radio is morning drive. Right. 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 And we're still we're still being you know, radio is, is being father deluded. You talk about the, the people who are the game changers, you talk about the people who are the disruptors. Uh XM radio. <laughs> you know, you look at satellite radio, satellite radio has, has destroyed a, a lot of that market, but still morning drive the last half hour of the morning yeah look i like your last half hour philosophy you know I, i'm a pretty blunt guy that's not something that we've done a lot of but it's something i'm gonna i'm, I'm certainly gonna test and uh i like it it makes perfect sense when i was looking at radio advertising and i was looking at the the, the surveys and the surveys are, are sort of like in the car business whatever you want them to say yeah but, but one thing about drive time in the morning, everybody leaves for work at half after. The majority of people are not yet at work by the top of the hour. But by the top of the hour, they're already at work, and a new crowd will be leaving here shortly. Yeah, yeah. But that first half hour in the morning has very little audience compared to the second half hour. Yeah. Your audiences turn on the quarter hour. Right. And the second thing I would do is that, if, if I could get the, the, the jock on the air to do the spot live, it is more than 100% more effective than having a pre-recorded spot. Well, hey, look, I'm gonna, let, me be, let me be devil's advocate there on that one. Go ahead, go ahead. 
So uh, it, that's because typically the production's not good. Um, and I would say this, I would put our production and I'm not, I'm not puffing us. I'm just saying, I got to disagree with that one just a tiny bit, Jim, because uh -huh. sometimes you can't control how good the jock is, right. Or what kind of mood they're in or what kind of tempo they're going to give it or, you know, and so it could just be delivered, but to buy it up to buy a, a person. Yeah. But I got to tell you, you know, if you have really strong, good pr production and you understand how to produce a radio spot, you know, you grab them in the first 10 seconds with something funny. Uh, you've got pattern interruption. You mentioned the offer three times. You close strong. You you understand the, the, the station that you're on and the audience. Are you buying, are you buying, are you buying, I would, I'm going to disagree there and say production would outperform the jock almost always. You buy in 30s, 60s, 15s? I, I happen to love 60s, but we definitely do 30s as well. Yeah. Because, uh, for people listening, uh, a 30 a 30 second ad is generally about uh, 75 words. Right. Uh, you get you get a little more in the 60. Um, you, you could say basically 160, 170 words in the 60. Well, hey, Jim, you want to know why we don't do as many 30s disclaimers these days? You know, I mean, if you've got an eight or a nine second disclaimer because the manufacturer is demanding that you have all these things covered, it takes it eats up a lot of a 30, but not as much of a 60. Right. So on television, as an example, with 30s as are, are the popular number, you can put the entire disclaimer on the screen. So and very microscopic print, right? Well, but still, you don't have to take up the you don't have to take up the yeah. airtime with the disclaimer. Let's talk about television a second. Is television still working? Yeah, I mean, if you do it right, um, you know, you can't just you can't just buy a flight. You know, you can't just say, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna buy you know X amount of spots." I mean, it really has to be a strategy. Uh, we're shifting some dollars over to OTT right now, too. I mean, I think anything with a screen these days is what should be called television. You know, internally for us as an agency, we, we, we've we started to almost stop talking about television and replacing that word with video because television was the delivery system for video. And that's it, right? It was the delivery system for video. So right. I don't care if I have a, a cool video I play on Facebook. I It's on your website. Uh, it's, it's embedded in an HTML email. It's played on OTT. Uh, it doesn't really matter where that video is played. Now, the, the only thing I would say is you got to know your audience. Um, you know, a, a, a typical television spot isn't something that you want to play, uh, in pre-roll on YouTube. It's a different audience. They have different expectations. Uh, television, they almost expect to be sold. So you can be pretty hard hitting and go kind of right after them with an event style marketing plan. And that's what we still pretty much typically do on traditional, you know, television. What well, I like about television today is you can make a cable buy. Yeah. And, and ge geofence your market. You can actually geographically determine what counties that spot plays in. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, no you're doubt. Not, you're not wasting the, the great broader audience. Well, um, yeah, that's really good. good. Yeah, that's really good for for television, and we definitely utilize that because you can't you can't do that in radio, right? I mean, that no. there's just no way to segment that that radio signal. There's a television commercial here in Atlanta, and they buy Wheel of Fortune and uh, Jeopardy every day. Well, see, okay, every day is frequency, so yeah. that's one of the pillars of advertising: reach, frequency, cost, creative. Exactly. So when I hear somebody's doing that, I think they're doing it right. You own an audience, just like you said, own the day. You have to own an audience, that, and they're that, owning the Jeopardy audience that, and the right. Fortune audience. Linda Beaver, Beaver Toyota. Yeah, she she knows what she's doing. Oh, she and she's got the personality. She has the stage presence. Yeah, uh, she's not advertising money. She's advertising dealership image. But since she's advertising image, and she talks about the amount of inventory and their sure. philosophies and no haggle, one price, and she's got her selling points. But the selling points are not money. Right. You know, so the selling points are everything in the spot but money. And the one thing she says, you are less than a 30 minute drive from our dealership because she knows what geographic. You know, right. Because she targeted the audience. Yeah. So, yeah. That, I love that, that. I, listen, I love that. I would love to chat with her someday just to hear what what else she does for, you know, marketing or, you know, who who showed her that or who does that for. Because that's that's doing it right for what that's looking at their stats. They are six, extremely successful. Oh, no doubt. I don't know Linda Beaver. I just see her on TV. <laughs> I just love the, and I've studied her marketing method, her market, her marketing reach, 
you know, everything she's doing is correct. So what else about television is good? Well, look, I mean, I think you can get that frequency that we talk about, you know, the, so if you're looking at radio as an example, um, and, and you, you have, you get in a car, you have five stations typically if somebody's on terrestrial radio still. And look, I'm going to sit here and tell you, terrestrial radio is still extremely, extremely effective. That Not everybody has cut that cord, you know, so to speak, and is on Pandora or streaming in their car. Not every car. Serious XM. Yeah, not everybody has that. You know, we all think they do because you and I have it, but not everybody has it. So uh, on television, it gets harder. But what I heard you say about Linda there that does this is you buy specific programs that you know are your audience. You know, as an example, one of the shows that we like, The Big Bang Theory, you know, it's relatively inexpensive for what it is, but why I like it is because if I watch that show, I typically watch it every night or I watch it every couple nights or I at least get back to it once a week. Maybe if there's a marathon on, I watch every one for 10 hours straight. <laughs> so we pick shows that are engaging, right? That's, so television, you need engagement. Um, Nobody wants to miss a word that Sheldon Cooper says if you like that show. If you don't like if that, you like it, watch, we can't get everybody. And that, that's right. the one thing about dealers, they buy what they like. Well, right. But if you, you know, there's a, that, uh, that show gets a lot of audience, and that audience mm -hmm. is super loyal. And so, therefore, you get frequency. So, you buy shows like that, that you just buy every show because they're going to see it over and over and over again. No different than like what you just said with Linda, with people that tune into Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune every night. So you have to be strategic in the shows that you're buying. Sports are amazing, right? I mean, just so I don't miss that one and somebody thinks I'm stupid. You know, uh, sports are live. People watch live programming. So, you know, if you're buying the NFL, which is just starting up, right? If you're buying the NFL, then how do you get your frequency? Maybe you buy Monday night, you buy Thursday night, then you go buy college football because maybe the football guy watches college. And then you go buy the Red Zone. And then you go buy, you know, Sports Center. And then you have that guy and you start, you start getting all of those people, right? Hey, Bill Cop, how are you, buddy? Um, you know, so, you know, you, you get all of that. So, you know, it, it's really about frequency and understanding how to buy television to get frequency. Most of the time when we take on a new client, we look at their television buy and it's, you know, the, the rep came in and sold remnants, so to speak, right? They come in and they sold this cable package and they're like, well, I'm on 30 stations and I got this many spots, but they're all over the place and there's zero frequency. Nobody's seeing your ad three, four, five, six, eight times and getting it hardwired into their head. And that's why dealers quit television. It's the same reason dealers quit radio. I'll say this about that. Um, if you buy a day, own the day. We've already covered that. Yeah. But poundage is superior to placement. Yes. I mean, the more I would rather have a spot on television that reached a hundred thousand people ten times, that a six o'clock news that reached a million people one time. A hundred percent. Because look, the four pillars of advertising, Jim. I'm a freak about this. The four pillars of advertising, no matter if it's digital, any, it's reach, frequency, cost, and creative. And mm -hmm. what you just described about that, like say Super Bowl ad, you're only going to get reach. You're never going to have frequency with that unless you buy the frequency buy after the fact and try to follow that customer around. So I'm with you. I would much rather do A than B there. Exactly what you just said. When when I was a DJ, I was with WAPE in Jacksonville, 50,000 watts AM. Our, our listening path was 100 miles wide and 800 miles long. We broadcast right up the coast from Jacksonville, Florida, all the way to Norfolk, south to Orlando. Right. I mean, and we a lot of these small communities, we were their only radio station. Yeah. So we definitely had reach. <laughs> well, look, right? I mean, that is one of the pillars. That's why we always we always yeah. go back to it. You know, in, in in our in our agency, everybody's taught they have to defend. So if they're doing a media buy, and it's you know, sometimes it's not as relevant when you're talking about digital stuff. But look, Facebook is an example. But switching from uh, traditional stuff a little bit over to digital, I mean, Facebook, Facebook to me is the most frequency for a reason, right? How many people saw it and how often did they see it? It's not Facebook it's not the most frequent advertising out there. Facebook is producing more per dollar spent than any of the other mediums. Reach and frequency is amazing. But the kicker there is that not only can you get reach and frequency, but then you can get the click to a lead. Then you can, right? You can get the click into anything. 
You know, we're, we're pushing people into car now, Goo Goo, private message, fate, you know, uh, texting platforms. You know, one of the things that's big for us is just how do we start a conversation, you know, with a customer and where I think digital, uh, pardon me, traditional television and radio still work and they, we do lots of it because it works. That conversation a lot of times is just a phone call in, which is good or the best way to start a conversation, which is they walked into the showroom and they said, Hey, I'm here to look at, you know, ABC, you know, can you show me a, can you show me an Explorer? Can you show me a RAV4? Whatever the case might be. Um, but when you switch over to digital right now, we're starting looking to start conversations different ways. You know, is it a chat started and initiated? Is it a text? Um, you know, is it a lead form? Is it a digital retailing funnel that we're in? It's really, everything is about trying to get that communication going back and forth with the customer. Absolutely. You know, so Facebook to me, as I mentioned just now, is the most effective, cost effective, results effective medium that we, we use today. But it's just- We don't disagree. What's that? We don't disagree. No. Yeah, not at all. But anyway, I mean, it's, it's just got, it's got so many eyeballs and it's still inexpensive. How are you gotta, using again, it's got to be utilized properly because now there's, it's a pretty heavy competition, you know, right there. Everybody's there. That's why right. I'm, I'm, I'm trending back to TV and radio just a little bit. Yeah. And even direct mail. A, a mix. Once again, it's a mix. You know, you know, how many dealers have a budget of $100,000 a month? Well, you probably shouldn't spend 100000 on Facebook because it's the best place currently. You've got to have a mix of that. You've got to have some different streams and some different DNA threads for somebody to say, hey, I was driving down the road. I heard your radio spot. I saw your billboard. Then I got home. I was watching the NFL. I saw your ad. And by the way, I was second screening and I came across your Facebook ad. And that's when I clicked because they've seen you three or four times. And so now all of a sudden you have that credibility from your, from your uh, connected marketing plan. And, and then once they get to a device that they can click, that's, I believe wholeheartedly, you get more leads that way. Well, I would believe that most of our consumers today are ending up on a handheld device. I agree. Yeah, no doubt. Everything that's, that we track this. That's I mean, a, and, and that's the, last, the last way they shop. Right. Is with a handheld device. They might, they might've came in, through newspaper, which I don't see many markets having newspaper anymore. I mean, I, I was a keynote speaker five, six years ago for the Massachusetts Auto Dealers Annual Convention. And and I got up there and made a big speech about how newspaper were, was dead. It was only good if you had a, a parakeet. It was only good if you had a and the guys from the Boston Globe newspaper wanted to fist fight. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. It threatened his life. <laughs> they, 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 they had to sign me a bodyguard, you know, I was, I was in more danger than, than uh, <laughs> well, than hey, listen, Jim, <laughs> right. yeah. So, hey, I'll tell you something funny though, uh, that we found trending, uh, and, and again, this is a little bit of a softball pitch to, to anybody listening, um, in all of our data analytics that we look at, uh, we found an interesting phenomenon that, uh, people between the ages of 25 and 54, uh, you know, when you, everybody kind of looks at those demographics, but it even skews a little higher when you get up to about 35. But but that that working age guy is on a desktop a lot in the middle of the day shopping for a car because he's at work. 25 you know, or she's at work. Yeah. So what, what we find is, you know, and the relevancy of that is what do you do? So if I'm serving up ads at three o'clock in the afternoon, heading into the weekend, Thursday or Friday, that person's probably not going to click to call because they're in a cubicle next to somebody else using their work computer to shop, right? Because we see a really big spike in uh, desktop usage at that age group during the work hours. So what you got to do is you got you to push chat, right? You got to push a, a a typing conversation, you know, into a digital retailing tool, into a chat company, into private messenger, into a texting platform. You got to push something like that and because they're not going to call. They're, they're, but they're shopping heavily at work. I can tell you that. And they're using a desktop. Yeah, well, yeah it's all about the demographic. And people don't understand different, different mediums, different modalities reach different demographics. Like if I'm going to advertise special finance, I'm buying Jim, Jerry Springer and Maury. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And every show, right? Every single show frequency. Own, own them. Own the day, own the show. That's why you have to compete with the the accident lawyers. Yeah. Oh, no doubt, right? <laughs> yeah. 
they know what they're buying. Yeah. I personally am a senior citizen. I personally watch a lot of old Westerns on TV. Yeah. Every other ad is a Medicare ad. ad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. They know who hey, watches those old, old Westerns. Hey, just off of advertising for a minute, I got to ask you, since you watch old Westerns, do you watch the new Western? Have you watched Yellowstone? And if you do, do you like it? I like Yellowstone. I've, I have watched it you know, not as much as I can because my wife won't watch it with me. Got it. Okay. You know, so I... That, that's the dark hours of the morning viewing. Yeah. No, yeah. Hey, listen, the new Yellowstone with Kevin Costner, I happen to like. I'll throw that out there. But it's I, a, it's a modern day Western, which is interesting to me. There's not many of those. You know, I, I go back to, you know, Clint Eastwood and, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No doubt. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of old Westerns. But anyway, <laughs> let's, let's stay on point. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Tangent to Yellowstone. Been watching okay. it. Thought I'd ask. Thought I'd ask. You do special finance by Jerry Springer and Maury Povich. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. Povich, yeah. But yeah, do that. Okay, so digital advertising. Yeah. Um, Google Google is still the benchmark. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, everybody pits Facebook and Google against each other in a way. And obviously, Bing, you know, hops into that equation. And, and a few others, I think that, you know, if you're really digging deep, you'd say, but yeah, but what about, you know, things like lot links, you know, those kinds of things. Bing, but, I don't know. Is being effective? Yeah. Yeah. We've had, we've had very good luck with all of it. Um, again, it's really about how you use it. So, you know, you have to understand the medium. I mean, I don't, I, I, I make this analogy when we go into a store, it's like, the, I'll take you back. I'll take you back 15 to 20 years when you'd walk into a store. And I know you're going to laugh when, when I say this, because I know, I know you've lived this, Jim. You know, the dealer says, well, we're going to spend five grand on radio, five grand on television. And it's this arbitrary number of like, well, we got 10 grand to spend. So put five of it here and five of it there. Well, nowadays that, that, that conversation sometimes is let's put five grand to Google, five grand to Facebook. Yes. And it, it really hasn't, the conversation hasn't changed. The mediums have changed. So for me, you know, what we always tell a dealer is, you know, do the math, you know, do the math, slow down and just do the math. Meaning one of them is better than the other for you. And let's figure out what that is. And let's decide whether or not five grand and five grand is really the most intelligent, wisest spend of what you're doing. Or should we maybe be spending seven because the keywords that we're buying for your manufacturer in your market, there's not a lot of competition and we can get a really high uh, impression rate with a very high click-through rate and really get a lot of leads through paid search, AdWords, Bing, et cetera. Or is that saturated to the point you have so much competition that you know it's, it's not as effective for you as again, as a different market. You can't be cookie cutter. Every dealer, every market, every manufacturer is different. So what, depending upon what you find there, that's when we move stuff over to social. And I'll tell you, look, it might not be popular. I happen to be a huge fan of paid search because they're low funnel shoppers. I so, gotta tell you, they are low funnel shoppers. And there is a, a website called spyfoo.com. Yeah. yeah. And now there are other websites that do exactly what spyfoo does. But spyfoo dumbs it up where people like us can understand it. It's a right. it's lay, layman friendly. Right. It'll show you how your ad words are working how your organic words are working, how your paper clicks are working, how much the competition is having success with certain terms, right? Approximately how much they paid per click. Yeah. Which so if you go to spyfu like kung fu s p y f u.com. Yeah. It'll give you a complete analysis of your your pay per click and organic click marketing, who's infringing on your market, what competitors are spending their money on. It'll give you a big and like I said, there are other sites that do that. But yeah. Not dumbed up like late, layman quality. Well, hey, you know what? Uh, again, I'm, I'm always open to new suggestions. We don't use that. But, you know, we use a competitor to that. But uh, mm -hmm. we're going to we're going to shop it based upon your recommendation and see what we think. You know, just yeah. take a look at Spy Food. Like I say, if you like are it. really sophisticated, as you are, you know, there are, are other programs that probably dive deeper and are, are more accurate. But spy foo for, for the average car dealer just wanting to see how my stuff's doing. Right, right. Yeah. If, now, now what, okay, we've talked about digital. What are, what other parts of, of digital? How about website conversion? What, 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 what have you got working? 
Well, you know, for me, I, I think that there's a, I'll back that question up a little bit. I, I, and again, for the dealer listening, you got an ad agency pushing traffic into your site, and then you got a website provider that's providing you with a website. And there's a little tiny bit of a disconnect that we see typically. Um, and and kind of what I mean by that is, you know, imagine you're on the call with the, with the agency that does your paid search, hypothetically. They're going to tell you everything's healthy, everything's great, everything's wonderful. We've got this many clicks in, cost per click is low, you're blah, blah, blah. They're going to, everything's healthy. Now, every dealer's heard that. Then I think what's going to happen is the dealer is going to say, but I'm not selling any more cars. And they say, well, they're not converting. You know, I'm not getting conversions. I'm not getting leads. And then it becomes a little bit of a fight sometimes. And I'm not saying with everybody, there's, there's some mm -hmm. really strong companies out there, but we've heard this fight many times where, you know, you'll blame the website provider for not having a website that converts and a website provider will blame the ad agency for not sending high enough quality traffic. When really what's happening is there's a, just this little tiny get disconnect that happens. Are anybody at the agency that you're using should be, if they're pushing traffic to a site, they should be held responsible for where, because they're the ones that know what the ad is. They're the ones that know what it says. They know the intended audience. They know the, they, they know exactly what that customer is looking for or what they want. So, mm -hmm. They should be responsible for where does that click land and does that page convert? In my opinion, not the website company. Website companies should do what they do and that is provide a website and a platform for the dealer to utilize. As an example- There's a, there's a third part of that though. Yeah, go ahead. You could have a website company that was completely competent, an agency that's completely competent and your people suck. Oh no, listen, that I agree with. That's we always yeah. so we always say it's our job to drive you high quality traffic and leads. It's your BDC's depart, you know, job to to uh, set appointments and put people in the showroom out of those leads. And then it's your sales manager's job to close deals. It's a three part accountability formula that we tell all of our dealers. Well, you, you only gave two of them a minute ago. You you're being a little politically correct, and I wanted to <laughs> I want, you, you gave us two of them. Yeah, I heard I caught you. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, conversion no, is up there. But in reality, Jim, isn't that true? Like if we send high quality or any agency sends high quality traffic to uh, a site and develops and, and, and increases the lead counts, if the BDC or whoever's in charge, I don't care if it's cradle to grave, right? Whatever, whoever's in charge of making sure that those leads become floor traffic, they have an accountability as well. And then I feel it's also the, the, the dealer's responsibility to make sure that the, the, the sales team and the GSM you know, are converting those 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 leads and those those appointments into deals. So we kind of look at it like a funnel. Where is it breaking down? If we're not providing high quality leads, we got to go. If your BDC is not, you know, uh, setting enough appointments from those leads, then you got to we got to train, we got to learn, we got to we got to we got to churn. You know, and the same thing happens at the desk. I mean, it really when you break it down, compartmentalized by those three things, you can typically find the leak. Well, I'm going to make a statement, and I want to make this statement. And then get your opinion because I'm pretty opinionated about this. <laughs> and um, not you. Who would have guessed? Yeah. You ever see Home Alone with Macaulay Culkin? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. Wow. So, yeah. Um, do that. Yeah, I know. But I don't believe this is this is Ziegler opinion. Have I heard the word my opinion? I think most of all of the majority of your lead providers suck. <laughs> You're spending too much money on lead providers. Yeah. Lead providers are not doing the job. They they are dinosaurs shrinking down into the tar pits, eating the last brown shriveled leaves off the trees. Yeah. You know, lead provide the lead provider model is dead, but they don't know it yet. Yeah. So well, look, I, I'm not in disagreement with that statement. I truly believe there's a couple good ones out there that I, you know, and, and I don't mean I'm not even gonna mention names. I'll tell you why. Because it, it's different dealer to dealer, market to market. You know, there's there's just some people that are doing a good job and some people that aren't. But I, I'm not in disagreement with what you're saying. The dealer's website is becoming so, so, so much more important uh, than it ever has been. And one of the reasons I think that is, is simply, you know, Google My Business. I mean, it's basically the homepage on mobile, right? I mean, so once you get there and you, you could click through, you could do just about anything. So in my opinion, I agree with your statement because I think your website's got to convert better than it's ever converted. It's got to convert better than it's ever converted. Your people have to be better trained and they have, see training is not the problem. 
now this is good, this goes back to Ziegler, the the trainer. Yeah, training is not the problem. People say, well, we need more training. No, you don't. You need to just do what you're trained to do. You know, because when I go in dealerships, people don't do anything like resembling what they were trained to do. Right. But, you know, we don't have a, and I have in my big conferences, I have a, a saying, we don't have a knowing problem. We have a doing problem. Yeah, ain't that the truth? Yeah, we don't have a knowing problem. We don't have a what problem. We have a when problem. Yeah. Everybody yeah. knows what to do, but when never happens. Well, and you think this is funny on that statement. I always say sometimes that we don't have a, well, you shouldn't be airborne. Uh, you shouldn't be chairborne. You should be airborne, right? You know, so mm -hmm. get out of the chair. And that goes directly to your knowing and doing. We know we should get up. I learned from you in one of your conferences years ago, uh, early management intervention, right? Um, Touch it early and often. Chair and do what you know you're supposed to do. Go out and say hi to the customer. Put a little pressure on the salesperson by saying to the customer, "Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Jones or Buggins, right? Just wanted to say hi to you. My name's Troy. My name's Jim. I hope Bill's going to do a great job for you, but I'm here for you if you need me. You know, there's so many reasons to do that, and and I don't know that it's getting done like you just said. Sometimes it's a it's a doing problem, not a knowing problem. I think everybody knows you got to do it. So, hey, John. Hey, John. Good to see you guys. It's it's not a it's not a knowing problem. It's a doing problem. Yeah, I agree. No, that's well said. You know, and uh, you 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 alluded to something that I've been teaching for thirty five years. Touch the customers often and early. Right. A, ma a manager is like a shark that never stops swimming. If you're if you're not actively working a deal, you are in motion. <laughs> you got to find a deal to work. Yeah, exactly. I always listen. I used to say that to all the salespeople when I used to manage. I don't know if you knew this actually. So my background is really retail. You know, general management, running stores, building stores. That was my that was my background before uh, before ad agency. So uh, you know, I used to walk up to a guy and I'd say, "Hey, what are you doing right now?" Uh, I'm waiting. Look, you have two things you should be doing: one, selling a car, or two, be doing something to put a customer in front of you so that you are selling a car. There's just there's never, exactly. a, there's never, it's one or two. I'm selling a car, I'm with a customer, or I'm doing something to put a customer in front of me, right? Exactly. If the customer, I don't want the manager to go out and try to close the deal for the salesperson and interrupt the sale, but I walk through the showroom and I am constantly in motion, one end of the showroom to the other, on the lot, in the back. Oh, yeah. You folks having a good experience? My salesman doing a good job, he's one of our best people. You don't like him, I'll get you somebody else. Okay, you know, just play with the people. Right. Because people in dealerships today aren't having any fun. I know. <laughs> they, 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 they walk around, they look and piss off. I smile got, when I say that, you know. They got those Bart Simpson, pissed, they got those Bart Simpson pissed off faces. And yeah, everybody, everybody in the dealership looks angry and intense. Right. You know, walk up to the customer, play with them a little bit. I'll tell the salesman, hey, these are friends of mine. And the guy looks at his wife, are you a friend of yours? Yeah, hey, take care of them. They're wealthy. And I'll walk away. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you, Jim, the, the, the little secret that we find, and you know it, the busier the dealer is, the happier everybody is. So a lot of that goes away when you get traffic and leads and sales and gross and net. You know, it's, you know, we focus on that. When that when all that's going well, everybody's happy and everybody's, you know, they're airborne. They're doing what they know they should do. They're having fun, you know. Hyper awareness, totally aware of everything that's going on in the dealership. A manager's got to be hyper aware. And we started on this with lead providers a little bit earlier. Yeah, yeah. Do you believe that a dealer can eliminate most of the money they're putting in lead providing budget? Yes. And use it in other di digital avenues and get a better return? Yes. And, and the reason for that is organic because yeah. if it's done properly, look, if you know how to drive a quality traffic uh, to the site and you've got a good conversion point and you're, and you're learning how to get more leads and it's not, it's not a 100% automatic every single day with every single dealer. Sometimes you got to learn that with a dealer and figure out what works for them. But once you do that, you're providing them with an organic lead, right? So no other dealers being sold that lead. There are ways sometimes you can get that lead cost far underneath the $30 cost, um, you know, and even if it is the $30 cost, it's organic. So the customer knows who you are, what car they're on, who they're, who's going to be calling them. It's not a surprise. So the closing ratios are higher. So the answer to that question is yes, I think you can. 
you just got to spend that money wisely trying to drive more high quality leads. I wouldn't take that money. You just you talked about high quality leads. Money. Don't put that on radio or television. Put that in a digital strategy that drives leads. Now, a friend of mine uh, pointed, I'm not going to get what Vendory works for, but he pointed out to me that leads have a known percentage of, of closing. Right. You have 3% closing leads and you've got 18% closing leads. Right. And whoever sold you those leads generally has a pretty good idea of whether it has an 18% chance of closing or a 3% chance of closing, depending on where they got the lead, what, what, what the lead promotion was about. Right. And there is a monster lead broker in, in Detroit called the Detroit Trading Company. Right. Yeah, no, I've heard of them for sure. And Detroit Trading Company buys and sells leads between the vendors. Right. <laughs> I mean... They, they, can, they can have a lead that they know is a real crap lead and they sell it to Detroit Trading Company and one of your lead providers that you think is you know, organically generating their own leads or buying it, knowing it's a 3% lead. And they're, right. mixed, they, they, they're doing a brew, a mixture. 18% sure. leads. Well, let's put a little dab of 3% leads. And, oh, big bunch of 3% leads. You know, so yeah. they're, they're cooking up that stew. If yeah, you were, but look. I, I'm going to play devil's advocate here for a second. Yeah. If you're an extremely aggressive dealer and you know that the 3% leads pay the bills too, there's an ROI at the end, whether or not it's as good as the 18% leads, it's not, right? But if you say, hey, if I close these deals at 3%, I, I, have, I have more ROI, I sold more units, I paid more commissions, my salespeople are happier. Sometimes you can't buy enough of the 18 percenters. You can't push enough of the 18 percenters. So you've got to have some five percenters, some eight percenters in that mix in order to get. And that's why we have an average. That's well, why you yeah. say the average 10 percent. Use your example. Three and 18. Right. It's 21 divided by two. We're at 10. So. <laughs> right. So, you know, that's why dealers have different lead providers that close at different rates. Now, I do think there has to be some sort of a point of diminishing return. The, you know, the old saying, the Mendoza line, hey, if it closes under 5%, we don't do it. You know, that's smart. But I do think sometimes you've got to look at it and say, hey, you know what? These aren't our best, but we still ought to do it. Okay. Now, I've got Troy Spring from Dealer World today. Please share this broadcast, folks. But I've got Troy Spring from Dealer World on today. Uh, World-class, full services advertising agency, all mediums, um, What's best for the dealers? Where where they advise you to put your money? Let let's let's ask you, Troy Troy Spring, the dealer. Put on your dealer hat for a second. <laughs> hey, you, you know, know what? I don't have a hat in the office, or I would. <laughs> you put on your dealer hat. You know. I got it. I got it. Let's go. There you go. Got your dealer hat on. You're you're going to advertise. What what does your profile of, of advertising look like? You you have a Toyota dealership. You're in, a, you're in a half a million uh, demographic market in a, in a manufacturing town. What, what is your? Okay, so I'll give you an example. If you're in a half a million town, you're probably in that range that we just talked about. You're probably in the upper ranges towards that, I don't know, ranked 100th Nielsen ranked market as an example, right? Yes, you are. So Toyota store volume is not going to be a problem. So I'm saying you, first and foremost, I'm literally starting with radio. And I know that again, there's going to, there'd be a lot of companies listening that don't do radio that would say you're out of your freaking mind. And I would say, no, you're not because that's a perfect, perfect demographic radio market. Um, so I would start with radio. I'd own it heavy. I'd brand there. Uh, I would do everything that we talked about earlier. So we don't have to re regurgitate that. What, what formats of radio are you going to buy country? You're going to buy pop. You're going to buy, um, ethnic? I, I would buy every one of them. urban. Yeah, because look, the, the only way that you get the right reach and frequency, you know, everybody, in case anybody's heard this before, but doesn't understand it, I'll explain. If you're chasing 400 GRPs, that's gross rating points, right? We call them grips, you know, in order to get grip in, a, in an ad, in a campaign, you got, you got to hit 400 GRPs in a week, not in a month. So how do you get there? You could have the number one station and it's got 20% market share and you hit that audience seven times in a week, You tip in order to get your GRP numbers, you're multiplying those out. So you've got a 20% market share times a seven frequency is 140 GRPs. That's No one station's ever gonna do that for you. So when you ask me, what am I buying? I'm buying enough stations to get to, I call it sixes and sevens. I wanna get to a, uh, 
uh, a 60 to 70 percent uh, market share and I want to hit them six or seven times. That's the magic formula. Anytime you multiply that out, you come right around 400 and that's the magic formula. You know, you've got to have some reach. You got to have frequency. And so you chase that. And for that Toyota store in a demographic of a, a city with a half a million people with that model, with that brand, radio is going to radio is going to push the envelope. Again, if you have a great creative team. You know who I just described to you? What's that? Linda Beaver in Gainesville, Georgia. There you go. So you start there. Look, yeah. I'm not saying don't have a digital strategy, Jim. But if I only got one thing to do, I, I, I really would go to radio. And it, I know it's not a popular statement these days. But the, the store that you asked me, that's the fit. Now, you look, I used to run a really tiny, tiny store uh, in Lehigh, Pennsylvania years ago. Yeah. Outside the market, can't afford radio. You know, what I did in order to push that store because it needed a personality was I, I, I bought cable television with what you and I just talked about. You know, again, went back to that process. I needed people to wake up and say, hey, I know they're there. I know that I know what they do. I kind of like these guys. Uh, I like their ads. They're funny and they, they're in town. And so I bought cable because it was segmented right around my market and it was very inexpensive to do. Now, I had a digital strategy beyond that. So if they were searching for a car, I caught them. But again, two totally different markets, right? One, I'm going to say television. One, I'm going to say radio. And now you would ask me, hey, what about that store in a market with 5 million people? Depending upon the budget of the store, traditional is not going to make that cut. It's going to be a 100% digital marketing strategy because in order to spend the money wisely, in those markets, you'll never get the frequency that you need in order to make it work. You'll get reach, a lot of people there, but it's so expensive in those markets. Once you get above that, you know, like I said, maybe 75 uh, mark, once you look, New York, number one, LA, Chicago, Philly, very, very expensive to own a traditional media down in, the, in, in those markets. So, you, so now you're very, very heavy in, in digital uh, strategies. So, you know, I hope that answers the question. It really depends upon the manufacturer, the city, the town, the size of the store. All of that matters when you're putting the budget together. I really think Linda, Linda Beaver, Beaver Toyota is effective on television because she's Linda Beaver. She's got the stage presence. She's yeah. got that. She, she, she has that wholesome believability. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know the woman. I mean, I've just... Look, I, I, I'm I'm like in my life, I don't, I don't have to beg for clients or anything like that, but I'd love to meet Linda Beaver just to ask her about her advertising because you seem so hyped on it. That's great. Well, I'm, I'm hyped whoever's on doing it. Deserves a hand, you know, whoever's doing it deserves one of these. She's, so. she, she's really doing the right things. That's awesome. And, you know, I know the dealership's numbers and the dealership's numbers are way off the charts. for little I bet you she has an incredible digital strategy. I bet you she's got a great social strategy and, you know, I, there's just no way it's only television that you're seeing, but I think that's a great component. Yeah. Like I said, I don't even know her. I just have studied what she's doing and I've studied yeah. the numbers of that dealership are way, way above what the, uh, a dealership in Gainesville, Georgia should be pumping out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I well, mean, and you know, they got a good product too, right? I mean, for what it's worth, that's part of the plan. You know, there are, there are other Toyota dealerships, but when she says you are less than 30 minutes away from me because she knows what what geofencing she bought yeah on cable, on cable television sure she, she knows what areas she bought she didn't have to buy areas that are wasted where people aren't going to drive that far right yeah no again smart very 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 smart i love that line because it's a tangible right that's yeah. one of those things that passes the saturday morning test for me i know it doesn't it doesn't sound like hey 99 dollars a month let's go see if that's true but part of the Saturday morning test that I told you in the creative that, and, and she hit that is, Hey honey, let's go check that out because I know it can't be more than a half an hour away. Got it. Right? I mean, it, it. it is a tangible evident reason to throw that in the ad and because people value time. Fantastic. We have had one heck of a good run with this show. Do you think? Oh man. I look, I told you before I I'm, I'm humbled and honored. You asked me to be on it's uh you know, it's just, it's just cool for me. I appreciate it a, a, a whole lot. And yes, I've had a blast. I hope you, I hope I covered the things you wanted me to cover. Now your phone number is scrolling across the screen, the, the, the entire pr process. And by the way, people, please share this broadcast. Now, 
we we had about 26 people look at the show during the the, the broadcast but what happens with my shows is the replays has gone as high as 10,000 no kidding yeah the the, the replays because i put it on linkedin i'll put it on instagram i'll put yeah. it on youtube I'll, I'll put it in some of my i've got some some not so secret secret groups i've got two <laughs> or three i've got two or three groups on yeah on, on facebook and linkedin that are uh, probably about 30,000 people in, in all wow. my groups combined and and then I've got 150,000 people in social media, most of them car people. So, so you well, got the reach. <laughs> we, I got reach, but yeah, but usually people, we do these live broadcasts like you and I are doing right now. People don't have time to stop what they're doing and watch it. Right. But um, watch the replays on this. The replays will go through the roof. Plus, I'm going to put it on my my private on demand as one of oh, the yeah, yeah yeah so. People yeah, look, if any, of, if any of your dealers or people just want to ask an advertising question, they can call me. You know, I'm not going to just pitch, right? That's not my thing. Anybody that knows me, um, you know. You're not going to lock them in the room and throw the keys up on the roof? That's just, yeah, not my style. If they need help, if they've got a question, if they just want to touch base and say, hey, I heard you talk about, you know, radio or television or social or AdWords or Bing or, you know, anything. Just reach out and ask a question. You know, that's really first and foremost what we're about is, is you know, we always tell, and you know, you know, a couple of the guys that work on my team and, uh, you know, a lot of what we talk about all the time is, look, we really don't sell anything. We just find dealers that need help and we help them. Um, it just makes the world a little easier for us. So that, that, that's, you know, I'm, I'm in the car business, you know, I've been doing this 45 years and I, st I stopped needing the money a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't need the money. I'm I'm doing this for the fun of it now. Well, I, I know I'm personally glad you're still doing it for the fun of it. Did you ever see the movie Smokey and the Bandit? For, oh yeah, the very yeah. first one. Remember, I wanted movie. that car, that 1976 Trans Am or whatever that oh, is. It was a '76 Trans Am, black with a with a golden golden. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. In the beginning of the movie, Sally Field was a runaway bride. Yep, I remember. And yeah. She gets in the car with Burt Reynolds, and in the conversation, she says, "What do you do?" And he looks at her and grins at Burt Reynolds, grins a, a show off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm doing with this part of my career. <laughs> yeah, listen, well, well deserved, well deserved. You know, you watch Gunsmoke on TV. Matt Matt Dillon wins the gunfight every week at the beginning of the show. <laughs> Listen, yeah, listen. That's why you hold the uh, the uh, the Facebook. You win the you win every week. I love it. I win every week. You listen, every you week. are greatly appreciated. Your phone number six one zero five seven zero three zero two two. This is Troy Spring from Dealer World. If you have any questions or inquiries about your advertising, he'll answer your questions with no pressure. And if you're looking for an agency, he'll definitely show you a demo, won't you? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean. It's not so kumbaya. No demos, no demos, people. No. <laughs> but we really try to, we, truly, we try to keep it like, look, if you need help, you have questions, we'll we'll answer the questions. If it's a fit, it's a fit. If it's not, it's not. That's just kind of how we go about things. That's how we've grown every year for the last eleven years. Fantastic, Troy. Thank you for being my guest today. Um, now you've got two of my my very good friends. You have Jeremy Lewis. Yeah. You got Hunter Swift. And and how lucky am I? Right. I, I mean, I, I want you to when we when we hang up this broadcast, I want you to call them both and give them a raise. Uh, yeah. You know what? Here's the thing. Um, I don't even know how to answer that. So <laughs> Jeremy Hunter, they're probably watching now. Uh, they're like, thanks, Jim. Appreciate that. <laughs> now, look, I, I, in all honesty, I'm so happy to have them on board. Uh, we're very careful who we hire. Um, you know, it makes me happy to hear that you say that you've been good friends with them for a long time. But, uh, you know, even if, if you ever chat with Hunter, he'll tell you the process that we went through to have him come on board with us. And uh, I think a lot of it's just because he and I are very similar in the way we think, um, you know, about helping dealers, about not being crazy pushy, but, you know, still being, you know, we're still businessmen. We still do business, but they're just a really great cultural fit for who we are as a company. And uh, now I'm glad to hear you mention them because I'm super happy to have them on board. Take so, care, big guy. Yeah, you too. Thanks so much. 